In the aftermath of World War II, the landscape of armored warfare underwent a seismic shift. The United States, recognizing the evolving threats, especially from the formidable Soviet IS-3 heavy tanks, embarked on a mission to redefine its armored capabilities. The post-war period marked the end of the era of steel, giving rise to a new generation of tanks. The M48 Patton emerged as a symbol of this transformation. Designed to replace its predecessors, like the M26 Pershing and M46 Patton, the M48 was more than just a tank. It was America's answer to the challenges of modern warfare, and it would become the US's main battle tank in the Vietnam War. Concealed beneath its formidable exterior was armor plating as thick as 120 millimeters, affording its crew unparalleled protection. Its offensive capabilities were equally impressive, boasting a powerful 90 millimeter main gun complemented by coaxially mounted machine guns and turret mounted armaments. Vietnam's jungles and urban terrains bore witness to the tank's prowess. In one unforgettable engagement during the 1968 Battle of Hue, the M48 took a direct hit, an epic moment inadvertently captured on film. Just as the M48 Patton has made its mark from America to Africa, Europe to Asia, your ability to speak another language can also leave an impression across the world. At Dark Docks, we're not just passionate about history, we're also avid travelers, allowing our minds to journey worldwide as we delve deep into our research. This is where our trusty ally, Babbel, one of the top language learning apps in the world, steps in. With Babbel, we've unlocked the confidence to traverse Spanish-speaking territories and delve into sources in their native tongues for some of our most captivating stories. And guess what? Babbel's expertly crafted lessons, helmed by real native teachers and linguists, not just algorithms, can be your passport to a richer travel and learning experience. Moreover, their enveloping podcasts and games won't let you put your phone down. Yet Spanish is just the tip of the iceberg. With Babbel, you can learn 14 distinct languages, from French to Russian and more. Plus, with its 20-day money-back guarantee, there's nothing holding you back. Now. Babbel's opening its doors for our cherished Duck Docs viewers with an exclusive 60% discount for new subscribers. And remember, there are different subscription options, including one for life. Click the link in the description below and you can start chatting away in a brand new language in just three weeks. Viaja con confianza en ti mismo. Let Babbel be your ticket to travel with confidence. The Invisible Tank. After World War II, the United States Ordnance Tank Automotive Command, or OTAC, slowed down or canceled many tank development programs. By the beginning of the next decade, they changed the designation system of the vehicles in the US military. Instead of using weight designations, such as light and heavy, they started using the caliber of the gun, as the new designation would be more appropriate. The M47 Patton, produced in 1951, faced technical and production problems, preventing its use in the Korean War. As a result, Older tank models, like the M26 Pershing and M46 Patton, were deployed in its place. But it was necessary to replace these aging tanks if they were to catch up with the Soviet Union in terms of quality and quantity. During the Korean War, the US Army launched several design projects. To expedite the process, testing and development were done simultaneously with production. However, this haste led to some details falling through the cracks. General Bruce C. Clark highlighted the challenges of finding a compromise as they sought a fast, highly mobile, well-armored, and lightweight tank. It had to dominate all kinds of terrains and should swim as easily as it could climb hills. Likewise, it had to be air transportable. In technical terms, it had to have a simple yet powerful engine, requiring little maintenance but still capable of a considerable operating range of hundreds of miles. On top of that, the general comically remarked, quote, We would also like it to be invisible. No stone unturned. In a bid to boost the M47 Patton tank's performance, the T-48 project was launched. Its goal was to enhance the tank's turret and install a more potent gasoline engine. The initiative began in May 1950, producing scaled-down turret models featuring the T-119 90mm main gun of the M47 Patton. Approved by the Army in December, Chrysler Defense secured a contract for advanced production, design, and engineering of a 90mm armed tank. The T-48's hull underwent significant modifications. The driver's station was relocated to the front center, making way for increased main gun ammunition storage by removing the bow-mounted machine gun. They added a front glacis for improved ballistic protection, and traditional lever steering was swapped for an aircraft-style steering wheel. 
The power pack comprised a Continental AV1795B gasoline engine, generating 704 brake horsepower, connected to an Allison CD854A cross-drive transmission. Several T-48 prototypes emerged, with Chrysler Engineering crafting the initial model in December 1951 for tests at the OTAC Detroit Arsenal Test Center. Ultimately, six prototypes were built. With the onset of the Korean War, production and design refinement were accelerated, culminating in the renaming of the tank as the 90mm gun tank M48. Though T-48 testing continued until late 1955, the Soviet threat in Europe and the ongoing Korean War spurred the army to fast-track T-48 tank production, aiming for around 9,000 M-48s within three years. Despite the haste, ongoing evaluations ensured the swift incorporation of necessary design changes into the M-48 series production vehicles. Distinct T-48 prototypes sported varying features in armament, hatch designs, and experimental elements, such as silica glass composite armor panels. This experimentation proved pivotal in shaping the development of the M-48 series tanks. Turning the Corner The T-48 tank project marked a leap forward in tank technology, shaping the future of armored warfare. As conventional steel armor struggled to withstand potent new weapons and kinetic energy penetrators, a breakthrough emerged. Composite applique armor panels made from fused silica glass. These panels affixed to the tail's hull and turret, providing much-needed protection without adding excessive weight. The hull design evolved throughout the M48 series, with innovations such as a wedge-shaped front glacis and streamlined suspension systems. To enhance accuracy, a sophisticated fire control system, or FCS, resembling naval gunnery setups, was incorporated. This FCS included a rangefinder, mechanical ballistic computer, ballistic drive, and gunner sight, enabling precise long-range target engagement. Advancements extended to the main gun as well. Initial attempts at an autoloader system were hindered by space constraints and alignment problems. Instead, the upgraded 90mm T-139 gun was adopted simplifying barrel changes and reducing weight compared to its precursor. A remote-controlled machine gun mount for the tank commander introduced a new challenge, requiring exposure to reload. The remedy came in the form of a protected cupola, enabling the commander to operate the machine gun while under armor cover. Though early cupolas lacked optimal vision devices, ongoing development led to a superior design. Destined for Greatness In the early 1950s, Chrysler started building the Newark tank plant in Delaware to produce the M48 tank. To meet the urgent demand for tanks, production contracts were also given to General Motors Fisher Body Division and Ford Motor Company in Michigan, as well as the American Locomotive Company in New York. The M48 tank had different variations depending on the manufacturer. It featured a gasoline-powered engine and had a cruising range of about 70 miles. The suspension system used a torsion bar and had six road wheel pairs. Generally speaking, the M48 was an improvement over its predecessors. The M48's turret had a redesigned gun shield and standard pop-up hatch for the commander's station. It was equipped with a 50 caliber machine gun and various optical rangefinders. However, the early production of M48 tanks faced several problems, including engine and transmission issues, track and suspension problems, and fragility in some components like the rangefinder. Due to these initial shortcomings, the tanks were not considered suitable for combat use in Europe and were limited to use by U.S. Army Continental United States units until the issues were addressed. Some tanks were designated for non-ballistic training use at Fort Knox. Despite these early challenges, the M48 tank marked a significant development in armored warfare and became a crucial asset for the U.S. military, especially during Vietnam. Pulling the Pin during the Vietnam War, the U.S. military extensively employed the M48 Patton tank, deploying over 600 units throughout the conflict. These tanks were initially introduced in 1965 and allocated to the U.S. Marine 1st and 3rd Tank Battalions, along with the 5th Marine Tank Battalion as a supplementary unit. The remaining M48 tanks were divided among three U.S. Army battalions, the 177th Armor, the 169th Armor, and the 234th Armor. In terms of armament, the primary ammunition types for the M48's main gun during the Vietnam War were canister and high-explosive rounds. While the Beehive round demonstrated effectiveness, its availability was often limited. White phosphorus rounds proved valuable, but carried inherent risks, due to their potential to ignite when exposed to impacts from mines or RPGs. Consequently, tank crews tended to expend WP rounds as soon as they could find an opportunity. 
High explosive anti-tank rounds gained temporary popularity following engagements with NBA tanks at Bien Het. However, as a general rule, high explosive rounds remained the preferred choice, especially when engaging bunkers. As for defense, the Vietnam War posed a consistent threat from rocket-propelled grenades or RPGs, prompting innovative defensive measures for the M48 tanks. To mitigate this danger, the tanks were outfitted with various defensive enhancements, such as pierced steel plank, chain-link fences, and spare track blocks mounted on the fenders. Additionally, the tank's configurations were modified, with the extension of the bustle rack using welded steel. The turret sides were fortified by incorporating additional 50 caliber ammunition, cases of sea rations, and personal belongings of the crew. The sea ration cases, akin to the pierced steel plank and track blocks, served as a protective barrier. By strategically placing these cases on the turret's infantry rail, the tanks aimed to trigger premature explosions of incoming RPGs upon impact with the sea ration cases. This design approach exploited the RPG's requirement for a specific distance to function effectively, thereby redirecting the blast's force away from the tank's armor. The choice to utilize sea ration cases as a protective buffer was influenced not only by their tactical advantage, but also by the scarcity of storage space within the vehicle, which was predominantly occupied by ammunition. Just a scratch. On January 31st, 1968, in the early morning, a large group of soldiers from the North Vietnamese Army, PAVN, and the Viet Cong launched a coordinated attack on the city of Huey. They aimed to capture the Mang Ca garrison, the Tai Lok airfield, and the Imperial Palace. The attack began when PAVN soldiers, disguised as South Vietnamese ARVN soldiers, infiltrated the city and opened the Chan Tai Gate, allowing more PAVN and Viet Cong forces to enter. The PAVN and Viet Cong soldiers faced resistance from the ARVN and U.S. forces in the city. Intense fighting ensued as the attackers tried to seize strategic locations such as the airfield and key buildings. The ensuing battle witnessed firefights as the PAVN launched rockets and mortars into the city. However, they encountered difficulties in penetrating some defenses, like the Mang Ka compound and the Mac V compound. As the fight for the city raged, a film crew got an example of the M48 sturdiness on tape. As the tank advanced through the urban environment in search of the enemy, it suddenly took a direct hit from an RPG, and had nothing but an indent to show for it. In the heat of battle, the PAVN and Viet Cong forces encountered challenges due to the defensive efforts of the ARVN and US troops. The attackers made tactical mistakes by adopting a defensive stance instead of maintaining their attack. This allowed the defenders to bring in reinforcements, which eventually helped clear the city of the attackers. After hours of intense fighting, the PAVN and Viet Cong managed to capture the Citadel, a significant historical and strategic site in Huey, raising a liberation flag over the flag tower. Despite their initial successes, their inability to keep up the momentum and seize crucial objectives ultimately led to their defeat, as reinforcements from the ARVN and US forces shifted the balance of the battle. The Test of Time the M48A1 faced off against Soviet T-54 tanks at Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin in 1961. Although it had mechanical problems and limited range, it was considered an equal to the T-54. The type was used in Europe with different versions like M48A2 and M48A3, featuring better engines and firepower. In turn, the M48A5 was the last upgrade, with a new gun and improved 750 horsepower engine. The export version, called E-48, included changes for foreign needs. Many M-48A3 patents were given to the ARVN, forming the 20th Tank Regiment. During the 1972 Easter Offensive, ARVN M-48 and M-41 tanks clashed with North Vietnamese T-54 and PT-76 tanks, suffering losses due to new anti-tank missiles. But by May of that year, the 20th Tank Regiment lost all its tanks. M-48s were good in infantry support, but had few tank battles. In the 1975 Spring Offensive, South Vietnamese M-48s and M-41s defeated North Vietnamese T-34 and T-55 tanks. However, fuel and ammo shortages from U.S. funding bans led to abandoned tanks being captured by the North after the war. Moreover, M-48s and Australian Centurions were the only anti-communist vehicles in Vietnam to protect crews from landmines. They cleared mines on Highway 19 using a Thunder Run method, with M48s racing to clear mines quickly. 
around 321 M48 tanks went to South Vietnam, and 343 M48s reached ARVN by March 1975. All were destroyed or captured. The U.S. lost 123 M48 tanks, causing a total loss of about 500 M48 tanks for the U.S. and South Vietnam. Thanks for diving into history with us today. Like the M48 Patton, make a lasting impression wherever your journeys take you with Babbel. Grab your exclusive 60% subscription discount and step out into the world with newfound linguistic prowess. Click the link in the description, and by summer's end, you'll be saying more than gracias. See you in the app.